Welcome to or welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Noah Herman, and as some of you may know, I am a student in college. And even though I study business, I promise you, I am suffering through it like the rest of you. But something that does alleviate some of my academic pain is technology, specifically the iPad. And now more than ever, the iPad Air has become a fantastic value for students, not only because it takes after the iPad Pro in the best of ways design-wise, but but now also performance wise with the implementation of the very powerful M1 chip. And with that said today, I wanna to bring you through some of what I do with an iPad on a daily basis for my coursework and also work work in order to help you understand what this tablet is specifically capable of. All right, so first up, let's do something really basic and that is web surfing in Safari. And I'll start out just in regular tablet mode and then move into laptop mode or with the magic keyboard, whatever you wanna call that. All right, so let me open up Safari here. I'm actually gonna turn the iPad so I have easier access to the pencil as a left-handed person. But I'm gonna look up a company uh, called Theranos. We're studying this company in a marketing class of mine and I'm not gonna get into it, but if you know about it, it's whack. So let's open up the CNN article and read about Elizabeth Holmes and her doings here. But uh, while I'm scrolling, it's really smooth as you can see here, even though this doesn't feature the same ProMotion display as the iPad Pro, 60 Hertz is more than good enough for this. And I adjusted, it's really, really nice. Um, I can also turn the iPad uh, landscape here and uh, open up another article on the same topic here. So I'll use the virtual keyboard and we can open up the Wikipedia page, for example, and I can drag it over to the right. So we can cross-reference some information here, kind of read more about the history and sort of more recent news. Uh, and I can also resize the page as well if I'd like to, so I can do this or that. Uh, but what if I wanna copy in some information into an assignment that I'm working on on this subject? So here's uh, an assignment I'm working on answering some questions for like case study. Uh, so I can double tap here and I can actually copy um, verbatim some stuff from the CNN business article. So I can copy this little paragraph here and drag it over and boom, there it is right there dragged in and I can also just swipe away the Google Doc page to just get back to the article here. But what if I don't wanna obstruct my view of the iPad screen? Well, I can get the keyboard case here and I can bring it down and totally mess up installing it and uh, magnetically attach the iPad like so. Super easy and now I have access to a nice keyboard, full-size keyboard, where I can use some keyboard shortcuts like Command-T um, to open up a new page so I can look up Theranos again, so I can look up Theranos Trial. That might give you an indication as to how this is going. And uh, yeah, so I can switch back and forth like I am on like a MacBook. So it's really nice. Uh, and of course I can scroll with the trackpad as well. And yeah, that's web surfing with the iPad Air. It's nothing crazy. It doesn't necessarily take advantage of the M1, but it's a very smooth experience here. A fast one as well, especially if you're on 5G while out and about. Uh, but next up here, I wanna show you something else else that I do with the iPad uh, that makes use of the Apple Pencil a little more, and that is reading and annotating textbooks for some classes, whether it's in the Books app or any third-party app. But yeah, let's just jump into that. All right, so let's try out some reading. I'm going to look up the Books app that's built into iPadOS here. We can open up uh, a PDF style textbook. For example, this was my uh, B-Law or Business Law book from last semester. I can zoom in here uh, and highlight as well, uh, even though this is a PDF and not necessarily a textbook. Can we do that? Demos are always fun. Nothing ever works for me. This is like take 27. Um, so I can highlight some stuff here if I want to in different colors as well. And then as for like an actual textbook that renders uh, text size, depending on the size of your display, here's The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka, very famous book. But as you can see here, text is rendering on both sides here, kind of the size of a small textbook. Um, if you wanted to uh, compare it to that, you can also highlight text within the uh, paragraphs or chapters or whatever. I did this on a plan with the history textbook and it worked out pretty well. Um, but if you want to have more of an authentic, like big book experience, of course you can take it off. Uh, of the case here and turn it into portrait mode. I kind of like this, especially when I'm on the couch, just laying back and also too, a paper-like screen protector does make for like a nice Kindle paper white kind of experience. I'll also talk about this screen protector uh, when it comes to note taking as well. It's a really great accessory. Um, but yeah, I can sort of uh, scroll through here or virtually turn the pages. And I love the size of this. It's the perfect sort of middle ground between the huge iPad Pro 12.9 inch, that's also very expensive, and the cheaper but really small iPad mini, which might not be for every Everyone. All right, next up, I wanna showcase a thing that people tend to do with iPads, something people buy iPad for, and that is note-taking and document annotation. 
The first app that I like to use a lot is Notability. I've been using it for years and it's my go-to for PDF markup. So here's an example of me marking up a PDF. This is finance homework, which I have no idea how to do. As you can see, I wrote no idea. This is actually an assignment that I turned in. Um, but what I can do is I can erase that and just make up some you know, finance equation. I'm literally writing finance is equal to L plus M plus you know, suffering, whatever. Like, it's really easy to write something in, especially if your teacher requires you to sort of manually do so. Mine does uh, for a good reason. He doesn't want people cheating. So you have to like have your own handwriting on there, whether it's on a piece of paper or in my case, a PDF, which I can then email and submit to his Dropbox. Very streamlined. Um, another thing or, or another app that I like to use is GoodNotes for actual note taking here. Um, this is some notes that I took like at the beginning of the semester, as many people do, and then I stopped because I'm such a great student. But as you can see here, I hand wrote in the lines here, like Louis the fifth or whatever Roman numeral that is. But uh, yeah, for classes where, you know, it's, it's advantageous to write in lines, you know, for your own memorization, you can do so. I'm not going to write actual words because I can't think and write at the same time but it's very smooth, very nice here. Even at 60 Hertz, like I said, you don't need ProMotion to have a really great note taking experience. And the screen size is great too. I actually prefer the 10.9 inch slash 11 inch form factor opposed to the 12.9 inch. I mean, it is nice to have extra space, but this is sort of the perfect in between. And also too, like I said earlier during my reading section, the paper like screen protector that I have installed here really does make for a great note taking experience because the screen is turned into a paper like experience, hence the name. I'll leave a link in the video description. I get uh, some commission if you buy a screen protector from me. So definitely do that it helps the channel out. Um, but in all seriousness, it's a accessory that you really can't live without when you're note taking here. But yeah, um, this is a really wonderful device for, you know, PDF markup and note taking. And uh, it really does help me you know, keep up with my coursework and also to do so in a way that's a little more engaging than just typing on a keyboard. But real quick, before we continue here, I have a brief message from today's video sponsor, Ugreen and their Hytune X6 ANC wireless earbuds. They have a super clean, minimal design, very lightweight as well. And the earbuds themselves are really comfortable too. Um, they include some customizable or different sized ear tips in the box. And I have really enjoyed these for listening to music. The sound quality is great. I definitely noticed that while listening to Don FM, uh, the weekend's newest album, which you should listen to, by the way, if you're a weekend fan. Uh, and the ANC or active noise cancellation is great too. When I was in the basement of my school with a lot of people around, I couldn't really hear them. The company says it reduces up to 35 decibels of background noise. Also reduces background noise when you're on the phone with the included mics, which sound pretty decent as well. Battery life is good too. It charges by USB type C. But my favorite feature happens to be the price. These go for $69.99 on Amazon. I'll leave links in the description, of course. And yeah, if you're spending a lot of money on an iPad Pro or a MacBook Pro and you don't have much budget left over, if you want a decent a pair of wireless active noise cancellation headphones or earbuds. These are what you're gonna to wanna to buy. So again, I'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested. Something else I enjoy doing with the iPad is illustration or just creating graphics within Procreate. And I'm no art student, but it definitely helps to be able to draw some things and also create like graphs and charts for my coursework. So yeah, like I said, I like using Procreate to draw sometimes for school. I often use Notability to create like simple illustrations or graphs, but if I really want to make some art per se, I open this app. And uh, here's, for example, a brain that I drew for a uh, class that required me to create a learning journal based on the things that I learned in class. And I wanted to draw pictures to represent the certain course subjects. So that was one of them. I also drew this. It was about like prioritizing tasks. So this is like efficient prioritization. And this is like an inefficient prioritization. And I just did all of these in different styles within like a half an hour each. And of course, using the Apple Pencil and like the layers feature within Procreate just made all of this possible. Um, I can actually create something new here that like the screen size or like that fits the screen. And you know, I can like do some shading and drawing. And you know, even though I am accustomed to more so a higher refresh rate display, because I've been using this for the past couple days, I'm used to just the typical 60 Hertz refresh rate. And it's not bad. It's actually really good. It feels really smooth. The input rate or lag is really low. Um, you know, yes, you do get the added benefit with a higher refresh rate, but for most, you're not going to notice. It's very, very smooth. And um, if you do art, um, this is a perfect tablet to get starting out. It's way better than the ninth gen, a lot more bougie. And of course, you know, with a paper like screen protector, your experience is going to be even better. So again, check out my link to that. But yeah, um, I really enjoyed this for some illustrations within class and also to 
to you. Um, for thumbnails, and I'll probably show these off in like another video, but uh, let me actually find the um, you know thumbnail for this video. Um, this is the one right here. So, you know, I have the iPad right here. I have the magic keyboard right here, the iPad laying flat there. So, you know, this might end up being the thumbnail that you see, but yeah, all of this has been done with this iPad specifically. And of course the help of the Apple pencil second gen, which conveniently magnetically attaches and charges to the side. The next thing I want to quickly talk about is the convenience of touch ID. And you'd think like the lack of face ID is kind of sad, but honestly, I really like it for unlocking my device. For example, uh, it works in any orientation. It works whether you're laying down or sitting up. If you have a mask on, whatever's happening, touch ID works so long as your finger is available to, you know, put your fingerprint in. Also too, I love it for, you know, inputting passwords. Often I'm on my phone or my iPad pro sort of like doing a song and dance to get touch ID to work. Not that it's bad, obviously, it works eight times out of 10, but this 10 times out of 10 works really, really well. So I can log into my UMish account, for example, I can just uh, get my uh, you know password in there and then I have to do two-factor authentication, which sadly doesn't make use of Touch ID. Uh, the University of Michigan, if you're listening to me, make that happen. But uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. You know, you again, think that a older technology would be not as good, but I hope that Apple brings this to more devices. All right, and last up here at the end of a long day of schoolwork, I like to call my friends to ask about assignments and also complain about the coursework and also talk shit too. It's pretty fun. So I can open up iMessage here with the keyboard case on, and I always like to text with a physical keyboard because I type really, really fast. So here's a conversation with my friend Paul. So I'm going to say, hey, man, I am going to give you a call now if that's... Okay, yeah, I really like using my MacBook to send messages, um, but this is like a very similar experience with the Magic Keyboard here. Also, it has like backlit when you're in the dark, um, but uh, yeah, so let's see uh, if he says anything. I'm just gonna have to cold call him if he doesn't respond right now, but that's another thing I do. Um, <laughs> FaceTime calls with the new, uh, what's it called? All these tech terms are leaving me. The Center stage 12 megapixel camera, just remember that. Um, it's really nice for FaceTime calls, so I'm gonna just do it and shut up. So here we are, you can see the camera in the background, but as you can see, it tracks my head. Um, he's answering. What's up, Paul? What up? <laughs> so this is somebody that I talk to uh, a lot about school, uh, the good and the bad, mostly bad, but uh, what's up, Paul, how you doing? Not much, dude, just got finished with some homework. Oh, sick. Uh, he totally, we didn't script that at all. That's funny. Um, he sounds great through the stereo uh, speaker setup on here. Yeah, this is FaceTime with the iPad. Um, as you can see here, like I said, the center stage feature works very, very nicely. And uh, it's a nice big screen, so you can just sit back on the couch and just have a conversation with your classmates to, like I said, complain or ask about school. But anyway, Paul, thanks for being part of this video. Appreciate you as always. And uh, I'll, I'll call you later to bitch and moan about something. Sounds good, I'll see you. All right, peace. <laughs> <laughs> and that's FaceTime with the uh, iPad uh, Air, which is, uh, again, enhanced with the true depth, or, oh my God, the center stage camera here. Guys, this this is hard work, I promise you. But uh, yeah, that about wraps things up here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it really does give you a realistic look as to how I use the iPad Air specifically in my daily life. It hopefully gives you an idea of just how capable it really is. I would appreciate it if you'd leave a like, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions. And again, check out uh, Ugreen listed in the video description and paper like as well. It's a necessary iPad accessory. And as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in the next one.